What's good, everybody? It's your boy Todd Smith here once again, alongside my tag team partner Dale Clifford out there in Fernley, Nevada. Welcome to yet another episode of the No Gimmicks Podcast. Dale, what is good, my man? Well, in the wrestling world, we got a lot going on. Um, us being a Warriors fans, we're on pins and needles with uh, Kevin Durant right now. And, uh, early word is it's not good. Indeed. Indeed we are, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that unfolds. I think, you know, like I said, I have fate. We might be able to possibly get him back during the early part of playoffs. And if it's that severe and, you know, possibly still make a strong run at the title. But only time will tell. Yep. All righty. So, uh, on this uh, episode, we are going to look back on the uh, top matches uh, from uh, February for the uh, WWE. And um, we cut yes, it down sir. to five. But uh, we did have ten that uh, we were we were looking at, and uh, I just wanted to run through the the other ones yes. that we kind of didn't really touch on. Um, Mickey James, okay. Becky Lynch from Elimination Chamber, Neville versus T.J. Perkins on an episode of Two Hundred Five Live, John Cena versus Randy Orton from SmackDown mm-hmm. Live, Tyler Bate versus Trent Seven for the UK title on NXT, and then Tyler Bate versus Oni Lorcan on NXT. It's like those ones um, were good, but didn't yes. quite cut our top five. So uh, go ahead and get us started with uh, where we are um, on the matches that did make our uh, top five. Yeah, so just to give our listeners a, um, a perspective, yeah, this was a very strong month of action from out of WWE. We had quite a bit of uh, trimming down that we had to do, but our first match here on our list for top matches of uh, February from WWE is Pete Dunne. A.K.A. the Bruiser Weight taking on Mark Andrews. Um, so this was from NXT, and it was a rematch of their semifinals match from the WWE UK Championship Tournament. Um, in this contest, we have the hard hitting Pete Dunne taking on the high flying, energetic um, Mark Andrews. We commend both of these two Brits for a gallant effort, but at the end of the day, it was the better end for Mark Andrews as Pete Dunne cap- captures his first victory in NXT. So, Dale, what's your thoughts on this? Yeah, this uh, basically was a, a semifinals match again because it was a, a number one contenders match to uh, decide who gets to face Tyler Bate next, and it will be Pete Dunne once again, um, mm-hmm. which I think is good. It's like those guys delivered a great uh, UK uh, championship uh, title match, and Pete Dunne and Mark yes. Andrews seem to also work very well together, and they both um, live up to their expectations. Like Pete Dunne is the bruiser weight. He definitely um, – for his size, definitely a yes. some some strong, very snug, some strong UK style, and obviously Mark Andrews lives up to his f- high flying abilities. I did not think this one was mm-hmm. quite as well as the one that they uh, had on the UK tournament, but it definitely was still a, another solid effort out of the two. Yes, what without question, definitely. So we're gonna move on here to our next top match from the month of February from WWE. We have Charlotte. Versus Bailey. Um, this was from Raw, and this was for the Raw Women's Title. So this was a battle between two of the top female competitors in the WWE. We had Bailey, the fan favorite, um, versus the heel born with a silver spoon in her mouth, that being Charlotte. And the revolving door of the WWE Raw Women's Championship continues as Bailey, with the assist of Sasha Banks, captures her first title on the main roster. Dale, what do you have to say about this one? Well, I thought this one um, was better than the one that they had at the pay per view. Yes. So I, I uh, give them that, and it seems like maybe Charlotte and Bailey are getting more comfortable with each other now. Um, mm-hmm. And I just thought that this one, <clears throat> again, was way better than the one that they had uh, at the Royal Rumble. Yes, definitely only, agreed on that yeah, one. The only thing that came was like kind of ruined it was the finish where. You had Dana yeah. get involved, and then Sasha needing to help a Bailey, and you didn't yeah, have that was the, unnecessary. You didn't have the clean finish, which now sets up the possibility that at uh, Fastlane, um, Charlotte may get the title back. I, <clears throat> I hope not, but the, it definitely seems like uh, Fastlane is a bad spot for her to uh, lose her undefeated streak. Anyway, back to this y- match. I, yeah, it, it, it also does seem to go into that the women's matches seem to be better on the Raw episode when Charlotte mm-hmm. is losing than the pay-per-view when Charlotte is winning. Yeah, that's an inter- interesting uh, observation there. I kind of noticed that as well, too. 
So I'm not sure what it is. Maybe, um, you know, it's being on the big stage or whatnot. It's just not quite, you know, um, adding up to a, you know, a strong performance out of them. But yeah, that's, uh, that's interesting that you pointed that out. Um, definitely a strong offering from those two. So we're going to move on here to the next match that we have for our top matches of February from the WWE. We had TJ Perkins taking on Jack Gallagher, Mustafa Ali, Cedric Alexander, Noam Dar from 205 Live. And this was a fatal five-way elimination match. And whoever won this one had the opportunity to face Neville at Fastlane. Um, definitely a well-paced match. And I can say all five competitors had a chance to showcase um, to the WWE Universe what they've got. You know, in their, uh, in their skill sets here. You know, TJP and uh, Gentleman Jack outlasted the four other competitors. But in the end, it was a running drop kick into the corner, which spelled the end for the Filipino Flash. So Jack Gallagher moves on to face his fellow countryman, Neville, at Fastlane. Dale, what you got on this one? <clears throat> so I was kind of looking at the... Because the original five was Tony Nese over Mustafa Ali. Yes. And then... Right. Um, Had an injury, right? A We'll say it was an injury. That's WWE is claiming, but Tony Nese was at the net at 205 the following week. So I almost felt like they wanted Mustafa Ali in this match more than they wanted Tony Nese, which yeah, um, yeah, because I think they you are kind of seeing um, five of the guys underneath Neville right now that are getting a lot of TV time on a uh, 205. Live. Right. You also have Brian Kendrick and. Um, Akira Tozawa. But back to this match, I was just looking at the five guys that were in it, and then obviously Mustafa mm-hmm. got added, and I was like, well, Mustafa's an ad. He's not winning because he wasn't even in the original yeah. plan. So then, so they are. Yeah. So now mm-hmm. you're down to four. It's like, Noam Dar, I don't think, has gotten very many pinfalls since uh, adding Alicia Fox. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, he wasn't winning. Coincidence, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't. Th- so I don't yeah. think he was winning. And then my mm-hmm. like to see win was Cedric Alexander, um, and but obviously the obvious choice is Jack Gallagher, just because like it seems like he's the guy that over the last couple months has been getting the push from WWE. Um, so that was yeah. the choice. And again, I believe all five men um, showcased what they can do. Is like and again, it's like this is cruiserweights two or five live. All five guys can uh, absolutely fly, and that's what they did. So. And my goodness, speaking of being able to fly, that standing Spanish fly out of Cedric Alexander. There you go. That yeah. was quite a sight to behold there, man. That guy nailed that spot right there, man. That was beautiful. That was probably the uh, move of the match and uh, definitely uh, uh, a highlight for sure from Cedric uh, going forward as just some of the things that he can do. Yes, yes, indeed. So moving on here, we're going to talk about Bray Wyatt, who took on John Cena and AJ Styles from SmackDown Live, and this was for the WWE title. This was the first title defense in the era of Wyatt for the Eater of Worlds. After stating his case, um, AJ Styles was granted entry into this match, making a triple threat for the title, and Wyatt introduces Cena to his sister Abigail and retains in the process. Dale, what you got for me on this one? Another solid effort, and I do believe um, this one is one where obviously we know what we get when we put John Cena and AJ Styles together. Yes. So they had to um, yes. put uh, Bray Wyatt on that scale to try to get him involved in some of these bigger uh, moments so that he can um, capitalize on being mm-hmm. WWE uh, champion. You've got to uh, remember the matches that he's in so that you can remember the fact that he's now champion. Is like... Otherwise, you overlook him. Right. So he's been overlooked for so long. Now he's the, finally the champion. You don't want to continue to overlook him as the champion. So you put him in there with the two best guys that yes. SmackDown Live has going. And John Cena and AJ Styles. Which is smart. Yeah. And, and obviously, this is coming off of what they did at the uh, Royal Rumble. Arguably one of the top matches of the year. Mm-hmm. So just putting those two guys in there with Bray Wyatt. And, and all three uh, men uh, showcased what they can do. AJ Styles flew around, carried... Uh, John Cena and, and Bray Wyatt and 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 so forth as like and then uh, obviously Bray Wyatt got the pin over John Cena which I think is adding some of the other elements into uh, some of the things that are currently going on on SmackDown Live. Yes, yes, definitely, um, definitely some strong, solid action in that one there. So our our top match from the month of February coming from the WWE. This one took place at the Elimination Chamber pay per view. We had Randy Orton who took on Luke Harper. 
So this was a battle between two of the heavyweights on the SmackDown Live brand who have spent time as members of the Wyatt family. This match served as a showcase for Luke Harper, definitely a breakout performance for him on a pay-per-view to showcase his skills. Orton, to no surprise, hits an RKO out of nowhere, counting a discus lariat from um, Luke Harper for the win. Dale, what's your thoughts on our top match for the month of February from WWE? And as you said, this was the uh, showcase um, for Luke Harper. This is the breakout where everybody um, that didn't know who he was now kind of realizes what kind of talent uh, Luke Harper has. And for those that may have forgotten what Randy Orton can do, this is also one yes. of those that boosted up. Um, why mm-hmm. Randy Kill Orton two birds with one stone. Has been around for so long and is a 12-time uh, world champion. Um, yes. A lot of the attention goes to John Cena in the fact that he's got 16, while Randy Orton's got 12. And these guys came in roughly around the same time. So both can go. And obviously this one, you weren't going to get as much of the high-flying that you, that you get in a lot of matches, but that's just the thing. No. But you will get it from Luke Harper for a guy his size. Mm-hmm. Like he, um, He's not quite as tall as Kane or the Undertaker, but he kind of seems like he's the guy that is uh, moving in the direction of doing things that those guys used to do. Thankfully, I am so glad to see them give this guy an opportunity because I've been I've been singing his praises for about the better part of a year or so now. I always I know how you felt strongly about um, Bray Wyatt, but he's always been my favorite member of the Wyatt family just because I thought he was the strongest worker. And I've referenced this before. I'm going to say it once again. It's to no surprise because look where the guy came from. He came from Ring of Honor. You know, where the most, you know, probably I'd say the strongest workers in the WWE right now all came from that company. So, yes, definitely um, a very solid month of action from out of WWE. So these have been our top matches for the month of February. Thank you for joining us for this episode of No Gimmicks Podcast. We are no gimmicks, no image, all wrestling, all the time. Please visit our official YouTube channel. You can find us at www dot youtube dot com forward slash the no gimmicks podcast if you would like to receive our notifications when we release our new episodes then please subscribe we would like to hear from our viewers so please leave us some feedback in our comments section on our official youtube channel also please like us on facebook and follow us on twitter at the no gimmicks pc be on the lookout for my updates on my personal linkedin account weekly usually on monday afternoons also, check out Craig Perkins's weekly article featured on ProWrestling.com. And remember, sharing is caring. Feel free to share the links to our episodes with other pro wrestling fans on your social media accounts as well. That does it for this episode of No Gimmicks Podcast. For my tag team partner Dale Clifford in Fernley, Nevada, this is Todd Smith in Bristol, Connecticut signing off. Until next time around, y'all take care.